I'm Angela Lee. My 40 Esri colleagues and I hosting this event are thrilled to welcome the 700 that, of you that will be here from all over the world. We're excited to explore what digital transformation means for education. As a conference theme, digital transformation is eh, maybe a little bit more abstract than some of our recent themes, so perhaps some explanation is in order. Digital transformation means applying technology to fundamentally change how things get done. For example, using a map on a GPS-enabled smartphone is not just a little bit different than using a paper map. It's a radically different experience. Perhaps more relevant for this audience, mobile devices and flipped classrooms have transformed how many of us teach and how we conceive of our role relative to the role of our students in the learning process. This morning, we'll hear how GIS and location intelligence are transforming business and how a game could transform education. The book Junana explores how an immersive game could pose an existential threat to traditional education by enabling players to master the entire high school and university curriculum in just a couple of years. I now want to introduce my friend and colleague, Jerry Miller. Jerry is one of the most enthusiastic people I know. Always a smile on her face and unbelievable amounts of energy. She's been with ISRI for 15 years, many of them as an instructor, and the past three as a solution engineer with the education team. She also has taught at several institutions, including Westchester University, the University of Delaware, and Johns Hopkins University. This spring, Jerry accepted the role of education sector lead, making her the ideal person to introduce the transformation of the education team. Jerry will tell us more about her journey as both an educator and a student, describe the journey we hope to take with you to transform GIS education. Will you please help me welcome Jerry Miller? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Angie. And um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here and to be speaking with all of you this morning. I've been with ESRI for 15 years and the last three years working on the education team, working closely with many of you, have been the most rewarding in my ESRI career. And as Angie mentioned, I'm also an associate program director for a fully online master's and certificate in GIS at Johns Hopkins. And I teach, so I teach WebGIS, I teach special analytics. I used to teach programming, but it was just too much, so I had to give it up. And I do some administrative things like admission, student advising, curriculum development. Um, but as I see it, there's nothing better than being an educator myself and working with closely supporting educators. So as an immigrant and first generation college student coming from a poor post-communist era Eastern European country, Bulgaria, at the age of 18, it wasn't so easy. So my parents had about six months of funding to kind of get me started and get started with college and then I was on my own. So at that tender age of 18, I had to figure out how to not only make ends meet, but how to pay for undergraduate education. And it was, it was not easy. It was, it was all work. It was work evenings. It was work weekends. It was work all the time around my classes to do that. And that's not just the story of one student. That's the story of many of our students and their parents trying to figure out how to pay for the soaring cost of education in the US. And as I see it, it's our duty as educators to set these guys up for success, to give them the best we possibly can to make them successful as they are the next generation leaders. And they're the next generation, those decision makers that will hopefully make more sustainable decisions and address some of the challenges and some of the issues we have today. And we've got lots of those. So as educators, we are here to serve them. And that's my mission at Hopkins. It, it has been, and that's, that's what drives me and motivates me at ESRI as well. So, who we are as an education outreach team, you likely know many of us. There's a lot of energy on this team, there's a lot of expertise on this team, and we serve over 4,000 colleges and universities and thousands of schools in the US. And as Angie mentioned, over the next couple of years, our team is gonna be growing. So Jack and our ESRI directors decided to make a significant investment in education and to expand our team, so we very much look forward to that. 
We also have our distributors that we work with very closely. So Esri has distributors and offices in 87 different countries. And those distributors serve their respective educational institutions, their respective schools. So we work closely with them. And also, we're the education team, but we're part of the extended team at Esri. And many of you have interacted with and worked with folks in customer service, technical support, educational services, learn, products, and so on. Okay, so we're part of that larger group. And something else that's actually really, I find amazing, is education is one of the many sectors at Esri. So, one of the many sectors. Yet, we account for 50% of the active RGS online named users. 50%, so when you look at all of these, sectors, all of these industry, we account for 50% of that. It's pretty substantial. And another note I'd like to make about all of these different industries is that we, we always have, as an education team, collaborated with them very closely. And moving forward, that is going to be a focus point of ours, to work closely with these teams, because we don't have domain expertise on everything. So there's only so much one can know. But these teams are there to hopefully, as, as, as your needs arise or as you delve into other disciplines or just new, new disciplines and you support your respective interests, um, we're, we're here to collaborate with these teams and help with that. So a couple of focus areas for us. One of them is scale WebJS across campus. And that, of course, could mean many different, many different things. So when we think about it, it's essentially growing the geospatial community across campus. Yes, using GIS in new disciplines, in disciplines where GIS has not traditionally been used, or for those that it has been there, use innovative GIS technology to encourage growth and to encourage innovation. And as I said earlier, creating spatial literate children, pupils, students, that are able to make better decisions down the road. Another one is building smart campuses. And many of you have done lots of work when it comes to administration, so campus administration, and um, things like institutional research, infrastructure management, facilities management. And George has spearheaded some of these efforts for a long time now. And yet, especially with some of these newer technologies that we have, we're only touching the limits of what is possible in terms of having a smart campus. So we'll look forward to that. And another focus areas for us is championing your concerns. So you saw all of those different industries at Esri, all those sectors, and they all have different needs and they all have different wants when it comes to working with some of our product teams and engineering teams and such. So as an education team, we are here to express the interests of the academic community to represent the interests of academic community. And as a testament to that, this is, this is something that many of you asked for, probably all of you, I don't know, many of you. And a few of you took the lead to make this possible. So as of the latest release of RGS Online, there is a new option of new member defaults. How many people have seen this before? Okay, so hopefully more hands after this. So anyway, so what does this really mean? I'm going to switch over here and I'm going to demonstrate. So as an administrator in RGS Online, after this latest release, one can go in and enable these new member defaults. And again, this is done and requested by the education community, this, this new change. What this really means is when a student, new student, faculty, staff come in, they, or log into this organization, they already have certain defaults provisioned to them. Some of this we've had before, like the user type, role, publisher credits, and so on. But the add-on licenses is something that we did not have. And many of you asked for that. So again, so far, some of these workflows have been someone has to sit and assign licensing. It's, it's, it's a lot of time, a lot of manual labor that took place. But this actually gives us the ability, especially coupled with enterprise logins, coupled with single sign-on, which is integration with your existing identity provider on campus, to have a fully automated way of delivering our chess technology across campus and creating or geo-enabling your whole campus community with easy access to a technology. So, all right. So, 
So it's a pretty big deal. So if you haven't yet, please, either if you're an administrator, do this, work with your administrators on campus um, to go ahead and take a look at some of these options. And what this does is when one takes this approach of geo-enabling a whole campus, we see things like this. So this is a dashboard by our friends at the University of Michigan that represent our GS usage. And take a look at this growth curve, the number of registered users, the growth curve, and the representation of student majors, the diversity of student majors. That is inspirational, right? So thank you to Michigan. With that, we wanted to extend a note of appreciation to a couple of you that have worked closely with us, who have served and provided guidance to us, who have been trusted advisors, and um, who personally have helped me with lots of things. Um, so simply wanted to say thank you to all those and looking forward to working closely with many of you in similar capacity.